All right, we're going to go over a couple problems here on page 137. Um, the directions aren't here, so I'll just read them. Which lines or segments are parallel? Justify your answer. So basically, everything in the picture kind of looks parallel, but really you're going to pick two lines that really are parallel based on the angles that you give me. So if you're looking at number one here, essentially, is the pink lines parallel? You don't go by, they look parallel, so they must be. Or are these yellow lines going left to right parallel? And so the way you're going to figure this out is based on the tick marks. And there's one tick mark provided here in the picture. It's congruent here and a congruent here. So you got to ask yourself, do those congruent tick marks hit the pink lines that are going up and down? Here might be the transversal. Here is one of the tick marks, and here's the other one. Or do those tick marks affect the yellow lines going left to right? If I look at the yellow lines going left to right, there's a tick mark here, and there's a tick mark here. Well, if you notice this thing carefully, these two angles don't even hit this top yellow line. So this top yellow line could have been like this. And it doesn't really matter that these two angles are congruent. They have no effect on this yellow line. So it's not going to be these yellow lines going left to right. And the correct answer here, the two lines that are parallel are these pink ones going up and down. So we're going to say BE is parallel to CG, and we need to know a reason why. Why are those two lines parallel? Because these are top right corner, top right corner. Those are corresponding angles. So we're going to say the reason why they are parallel is because of the converse of corresponding angles, which basically means if you've got two corresponding angles that are equal, that forces the two pink lines to be parallel. Okay. And again, notice these corresponding angles really have nothing to do with this top yellow. All right, so when you get to number two, kind of the same idea. You're looking at potential possible lines that are parallel. So there maybe it's these yellow ones, or maybe it's the pink ones. Well, in both cases, they look parallel, but you don't want to go based on both cases. What information do we have? We have the 45 degrees there. So if I focus in on the pink lines, tilted slightly downwards here, and then the 45 degrees, that would be right here and right here. And in fact, that would actually be the answer. So it's going to be the pink lines. If I look at the yellow lines, which visually they look parallel, but you need to understand this 45 degree angle is right here, 45 degrees, and the other one is over here. These angles don't even hit the yellow line. And so the yellow line is not affected by the 45 degree angle. So these yellow lines could be parallel. They might not be parallel. So it's definitely not the yellow lines. It's going to be the 45, 45, these pink lines. So it's C to A is parallel to H to R. And what type of angles are they? Are they alternate interior? Are they alternate exterior? Well, they happen to be corresponding angles. So we're going to say the converse of corresponding angles. Why the converse? Because it's the reverse of corresponding angles. Corresponding angles would say pink lines are parallel, therefore the corresponding angles are equal. When you say converse, you're saying corresponding angles are equal, therefore the lines are parallel. Okay, I'm going to do number 13, which is in that whole area of 10 through 21. They want you to first say which lines are parallel. There's A and B or L and M, and then why are they parallel? So for this particular one, number 13, they say angle 7 here is 70 degrees. So it's an acute angle 7. That's 70 degrees. And this is an obtuse angle here, angle 9, uh, 110. And so obviously 70 plus 110 adds up to 180. So you got to ask yourself, okay, well, that's a good thing. Because sometimes when two angles add up to 180, it does force lines to be parallel. The only problem here is this yellow and this pink are not hit by any one type of transversal. Here's angle 7, here's angle 9. And so no one line, two lines are going to be parallel. Now, if, if the 9 was here going left to right, well, then you could say these two lines are parallel. If the 7 was down here, then you can, again, say that these two lines are parallel. 
But because this angle 7 and angle 9, although they do add up to 180, that doesn't prove anything is parallel. So you would say nothing is parallel. Okay, now they might be parallel given more information, but based on an angle that is way out here and an angle way up here, there's no transversal that hits both of these angles. So nothing is parallel for number 13. Okay, I'm going to do number 24 and 25. They say L and M are parallel, and you're going to solve for X. All I'm going to do is just do the correct setup here. With 24 and 25, in both of these problems, they're going to kind of give you information that you don't need. Uh, you got 19x, 17x, 27x. Like, what do you do with this? Um, here are the lines that are parallel, and because those lines are parallel, 17 here, that's the same as 17 here, 17x. And because those are alternate interior angles. And then together, this 19 and the 17 together, they add up to 180. And that's the equation we're going to go. 19x plus 17x equals 180 because they make a straight line. Why is this 27x here? That's there to just irritate you. That really has no effect on the problem. In fact, if you just block this out, this is all you really need for that particular problem. So they threw this information here. Don't say 17x is equal to 27x. It's just going to be wrong. You can solve that. 25, kind of the same idea. There might be some information here that's kind of useless here. Um, we've got parallel lines. You've got 2x, 5x, this 5x plus 40. Alternate interior angles are the same. So if this is 2x, so is this. This is also 2x. And much like the previous problem, this 2x and the 5x plus 40 make a straight line. And that's going to be the equation. This 2x plus the 5x plus 40 is equal to a straight line 180 degrees. So why is this 5x here? Well, it's, it's there to piss you off and throw you off. You don't need it. So don't all of a sudden this plus this plus another 5x is equal to 180. It's just not the case. 41 through 44. The directions say uh, which sides of the quadrilateral P-L-A-N must be parallel. P-L-A-N. That's pretty much the way you're going to go. You're going to go P, then go to L, then go to A, then go to L. And you don't just scramble those any way you feel like it. P to L to A to N. Okay? And I kind of made it look like a rectangle, but who knows? Let's put the numbers in this picture here. This is 72 degrees. Uh, this is 108. This is 72 degrees. This is 108. Now, if you've got two lines and these two n angles, which is 72 and 108, add up to 180, that's same side interior angles. And since that does add up to 180, that forces these lines to be parallel. So those two lines are parallel. PL is parallel to MA. But also, if I just look at going up and down, um, I'll do this in red here. If this angle here, which happens to be 108, and this angle here, 72, if they add up to 180, those are same side interior angles they would force these two pink angles to be parallel as well. So you're also, because they add up to 180, P to N is parallel to L to A. So everything is parallel. And the reason why is because of the converse of same side interior angles. Same side interior angles. And that is why the yellow lines are parallel and the pink lines are parallel. So if they add up to 180, and they add up to 180 both directions, in fact, they add up to 180 in all directions, that forces all the lines to be parallel. Sometimes you might only have the pink lines parallel. Sometimes you might not have anything parallel because they don't add up to 180.